Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at about 21 species of the lagomorphs of North America. Lagomorphs consist of mainly rabbits and hares, but also pikas, which are like mountain rabbits, but with short, stubby ears. Lagomorphs are pretty similar to rodents. They both have upper incisors that grow con constantly throughout their life, except rodents have one pair of incisors and lagomorphs have two pairs of incisors. Rodents are also generally smaller in size than lagomorphs, but that rule has a lot of exceptions to it. But let's get into the species. The antelope jackrabbit is found in northwestern Mexico and southern Arizona. It's the largest species of lagomorph we're going to be looking at today. It also has the longest ears, and its coloration pattern is gray on the sides with an orangish neck and a black tail and a white tip to its ears. The white-sided jackrabbit is mostly found in Mexico, as well as the southwestern tip of New Mexico. It does not share a range with the antelope jackrabbit we just looked at, but it has smaller ears than it, and it also has white-colored sides, as its name suggests, which identifies it from every other species in its range, by the way. The black-tailed jackrabbit is found over most of the western United States. It has, as you might expect, a black tail, but also has black-tipped ears and a gray-brown body. And of course its ears are pretty long, but not quite as long as the antelope jackrabbit. All of the jackrabbit species have longer ears than the average hare or rabbit. The white-tailed jackrabbit is our last jackrabbit species. It's found in the northern part of the western United States, as well as some of the prairies of Canada. Because it's found further north, it has a winter variation, which you can see on the right, where it's white but with some brown patches all over. Its summer form has the characteristic long ears, which are longer than its head, and it's got its white tail, which gives it its name, and differentiates it from the other jackrabbit species. The snowshoe hare is found all across Canada, except in the tundra areas, as well as the northern parts of the United States in the Appalachian and Rocky Mountains, as well as, of course, most of Alaska. It's the smallest species of hare in North America. It has very long hind feet for its size, and we're talking proportionality here. Its ears are also shorter than its head, and it goes fully white in the winter, with dark fur as its roots, which you can see here on the right. On the left, you can see its summer form, which is plain brown with a short tail the same color as the rest of its body, which is an important identifier, as you will see. The Arctic hare is found all over the tundra areas of northern Canada, as well as Greenland. In the winter, it is pure white, except for the black at the tip of its ears. In the summer, it's gray-brown with a white tail, though in the southernmost parts of its range, it may be brown like the snowshoe hare, in which case you can identify it by its white tail. The Alaskan hare is a rare species found only in western Alaska, where almost nobody lives. It has the same coloration pattern as the Arctic hare, except it does not share a range with the Arctic hare, so it only needs to be identified from the snowshoe hare, which you can do so because the Alaskan hare is pure white in winter and gray-brown in the summer the white tail in all seasons. The European hare is very large. It is only found in North America in New York and southern Ontario, but it's also found in its native range in Eurasia, and it's also been introduced to Australia, New Zealand, and South America. Its ears are longer than its head, like in the jackrabbit species, but it doesn't share a range with any of them, and it has a black tail with white below. So you might see that while it's running away from you, as hares will tend to do. The European rabbit is another introduced species with a limited range in North America, only introduced to some islands on the west coast and some cities on the east coast where it hasn't established any large breeding populations. It can be identified by its smaller size from the hares and from other rabbits by its larger size and lack of any grizzled fur. It's just pure brown with a white tail. The eastern cottontail is probably the most commonly seen species of lagomorph in North America, and it's found all over the eastern half of the United States, as well as some of southern Canada. And it's been introduced to some western areas like Vancouver Island. It's called cottontail because of its little white tail, and it has a grizzled appearance with its gray hairs intermixing with the brown. There is also an orange band on the back of its neck, and it has a cream-colored eye ring that similar species do not have. It often has a white spot in the middle of its forehead, which this animal in front of us obviously does not have, unfortunately, and it also has a black edge to its ears. Also, it uh, does not go white in the winter like some of the hare species do. 
the New England cottontail is a very rare species only found in some areas of New England and New York as shown on the map. It's very similar to the eastern cottontail but with some minor differences like a small black spot in the middle of its forehead which is barely visible here. It also has shorter ears and it does not have cream colored eye rings. It's also usually darker than the eastern cottontail and its ears do not have strong black edges. The Appalachian cottontail is basically exactly the same as the New England cottontail except it's found in the Appalachian Mountains, way outside the range of the New England cottontail. Everything that applies to the New England cottontail also applies to the Appalachian cottontail. The robust cottontail was previously thought to be a subspecies of the eastern cottontail, but it has now risen to species status. It's found in the western part of Texas, as shown on the map, as well as in the parts of New Mexico and Arizona where the eastern cottontail was previously thought to exist, but which we now know are robust cottontail populations. It looks very similar to the eastern cottontail, as you can see in the image here, and its range is the primary method that you can use to identify it at this time while there is still limited information on this species. The swamp rabbit is found in parts of the southeast, particularly between Texas and Georgia, and from southern Illinois to Louisiana. It's the largest species of rabbit in North America. It's similar to the eastern cottontail, but larger, of course, with larger hind feet and proportionately smaller ears. The marsh rabbit is very similar to the swamp rabbit, but a bit smaller with smaller ears and tail, as you can see here. It's also got a different range with the marsh rabbit found just to the east of the swamp rabbit's range all along the coast from southeastern Virginia down to Florida. The mountain cottontail is found in the western part of the United States and a little into Canada in the prairie region. It's identifiable by its gray-brown coloration and its relatively short ears, which are lined with gray hairs. The desert cottontail is found in the western part of the United States as well, though it's also found to the south in Mexico. It's even more gray in color than the mountain cottontail, and it has black-tipped ears, which are also longer than the ears of the mountain cottontail. In addition, the desert cottontail usually appears at lower elevations than the mountain cottontail. The brush rabbit is found along the west coast of the United States, and it is fairly small with a dark brown or gray-brown coloration. It does not have black-tipped ears, nor does its ears have any kind of hair on the inside like some of the other species we've gone over have. It's also got a fairly small tail, which identifies it from the cottontail species that may enter its range. The pygmy rabbit is found in the Great Basin area in the states of Nevada, Utah, Idaho, and Oregon mostly, with a small isolated population in Washington. It is the smallest rabbit species in North America. It should be quite easy to identify just based on that, but it also has a shift in color from summer to winter, with it being dark gray in the summer and grayish brown in the winter. In addition, it has a very tiny tail, and its ears are lined with white fur. This is the first of the two pica species in North America. As said before, picas are identifiable from rabbits by their much smaller ears and their habitat on mountainsides. The colored pica is found in the Yukon and Alaska. It does not share a range with the American pica, which we'll be looking at. The American pica is found in the Rocky Mountains from California and northern New Mexico up to Jasper National Park in Alberta. Again, it is the only pica species in its range, so you only need to identify that it is indeed a pica to be sure of the species. And that's it for the Ligomorphs. Next up, we'll be finishing up the rodent species of North America. If you don't want to miss that, please subscribe, and I'll see you next time.